Hi everyone, welcome once again to the 24 bit podcast and today we are shooting this podcast very early in the morning and in the nice ocean breeze of the Indian Ocean from the Malindi side specifically Batam and so if you are listening to this and you'd like to sponsor our podcast you want to shoot it from very fancy location nice places you can uh, reach out to either myself uh, or any of my colleagues here via any of the pl- platforms where you get to hear uh, of this podcast and we respond now we are here to follow up our last discussion from episode 51 in episode 51 we were talking about the mpesa virtual card and today we are going to expand that discussion with some of us have since gone ahead to use the mpesa virtual card for various use cases we are going to hear what experiences are what our challenges are and what avenues for growth are and we might throw in one or two of your feedback last episode we did ask that you get to tell us some of the things that you would want highlighted in this specific episode and to help me do all of those things that i've said as usual i have the usual suspects dixon at you know, techish.com I'm Nick Canali from Tech Trends. I'm Emmanuel Chenze. I write at AndroidKenya.com. So, first things first. Uh, how have you been using the Mpesa virtual card? Personally, I've used it uh, about three times, and it's on platforms online just for purchases that are not over 4K, I believe. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've, I've actually used it just uh, you know for paying Facebook ads. Since, you know, uh, since we uh, last time we had the, you know, our last uh, podcast around the same product, I actually used it to pay for Facebook ads, as I said. Yeah, so I think it's just uh, Facebook ads. And for for me personally, uh, when I do place, I have placed a certain loop, uh, my loop card for mm-hmm. Facebook ads. So I have not thought of removing that yet. Yeah. Actually, I had to disable it. Uh, I was actually paid for my Netflix, but I remembered my my Netflix got renewed. With my loop card yeah before i can actually change it to the new uh, mpesa, mpesa card pay. but mm-hmm. so basically what i've been doing just using to pay for you know some facebook ads you know uh, for some of the clients i actually work with great um personally i was in the same boat as nixon and i wanted to renew my netflix with it but then netflix as usual came in the dead of the night and took their money uh before i could do anything uh, that said i found small small use cases for it it's now on queue to renew my f1 tv pro so that i can continue watching uh, f1 and i've used it one other place uh, <coughs> can't remember where and the experience was just so seamless all i needed to do was key in my card details key in uh, uh, the dynamic cvv which you don't even get to realize unless you are keeping track of the numbers they yeah. just change on the fly next time you need it it's there and it's all been like nice smooth no issues at all so in 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 doing all of this um are there certain experiences that we want to share like for me it's gone all well yeah. but assuming i wasn't among the three of you and i wanted to know all of this what are some of the things i'd need to know before and Uh, I think as you see even for me I mean the experience was seamless I mean all I needed to actually needed to do was uh, to just key in the details and of course uh the challenge of course you saw the question I saw most people actually been asking you know us online was about the CVC like for example CVV. CVV I mean I mean if I pay for my uh for example my Facebook ads mm. well, let me let's forget about Facebook let me uh, talk about Netflix yeah mm. So that should be a, become a repeat payment yeah mm-hmm. so i think people, the people are asking so this if i'm getting a um, a different uh, you know uh, uh number every time i do a transaction what does it mean uh you know uh for a repeat payment in future but all the other process will be very seamless uh the amount was deducted you know uh well without any issue so i mean the entire process was just quick fast nothing really much to me uh-huh. i think the issue that i've seen a lot of people complain about online is when you use the mpesa app mm-hmm. to access global play it opens a mini app the way i'm sure it opens a mini app yes, ccb yes. opens a mini app so sometimes that mini app fails to launch mm-hmm. sometimes you click on global play and it doesn't launch mm-hmm. so you get that loading uh image but it collapses so you uh-huh, might be wanting uh-huh. yes, uh, yes you might be wanting to do something and the app refuses because unajua with the uh, the way it's set up you have to view the dynamic cvv every time mm-hmm. even if you saved your card number somewhere different so oh. that's the issue of experience sometimes 
Mm. Uh, and I still want to go back to Nick's um, question. I think we answered this in the past episode. Past episode. Yeah, in the past episode, as a user, you really don't have to care about what happens with the dynamic CVV. Basically, we are highlighting it because, well, we obsess about tech, and these are details that are dear to us. Mm, yes. Yeah, and but and also it's a question that will arise. But if it's a recurring payment, you the have platform, to it. yeah, yeah, yeah the, and the platform has been structured in such a way that it will take care of itself, that yeah. yeah so my thinking is uh, it will stall the details like it will do what it needs to do you don't have to worry that next time uh, i'm up for billing it will be declined or something nope as long as you've enabled recurring payments you're good and that's recurring payment on the side of the service you're using right yes. mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. for instance if you are a spotify user uh, in kenya for those of us who've had the card option you will have you need to have the recurring payments enabled and it will be seamless for a lot of people since they enroll via mpesa recurring payments aren't on so that will be different and of course safaricom does want you to pay via mpesa for as many the normal mpesa that is pay bill till or a push to sdk yes for as many of those uh, as you can and then the delineation here is um whatever they are having with global pay is supposed to stay hashtag uh, not hashtag quote unquote global yeah so basically if you're shopping on a global platform you go to <laughs> what is this bath and beyond uh the global site yeah. and you're buying a bunch of fancy fluffy tiles it will work <laughs> and then you come on jumia and you want to buy the same tiles but um the ones that are listed on jumia you'll use uh mpesa the usual mpesa on checkout either uh push to sk where, where you just initiate the transaction on the platform and then you get a prompt on your phone mm-hmm. on, on, on your phone and then you get to pay or say mpesa on delivery jama akileta rider akileta uh, uh, package yako you use ipay and that's it right makes sense mm-hmm. yeah i think that should be it and i think i think it's it, what, what of the uh, one of the things that people need to realize you know this is a global pay so you can i think it's, it's a question that i've been getting so much from people mm-hmm. you can only use, you can only use it to pay for global payments so if you're shopping on these you know international e-commerce websites or you're purchasing or paying mm-hmm. for you know for your google services or paying for your let me uh, netflix uh you know as i said facebook ads Netflix, no, I mean Showmax. Mm. I I think we should clarify that if yeah. you do a local payment, and I came to realize this uh, after you remember I read it up in the previous episode that if you do a local payment, you'll get something in your text uh, called the forex <coughs> charge mm-hmm. because the platform is recognized as a global payments platform. Uh, when you're checking out, it will charge you as if you're making a global payment, yeah. uh, even if it's a local payment. So the best platform to use. Uh, the mpesa visa card is to use it on a global play, payment platform because you remember in the last episode i said on uber eats i was charged oh, yeah. and there was an extra fee for forex mm. but when i've used it for other platforms th- that forex fee is already included in the transaction cha- uh, in the forex exchange fee mm. so for example if one dollar is due equal to one uh, 121 kenya shillings at the moment yeah. that's already included in that uh, f- uh, fee so you don't get to see that fee when doing global payments on platforms that check out in usd mm-hmm. yeah and by that there are no other quote-unquote hidden fees yes there's I, nothing else i or anyone else has mm. to worry about right mm. yeah I have seen people uh, make claims on weird platforms online that uh, uh, it's a means of uh, getting extra cash from yeah. you and all that. But from my use, I don't think I can see any other hidden fees. Yeah, the fee that I raised on my tweet was because I had checked out on a local platform, and that forex fee applies mm-hmm. because it assumes that that's an international platform. Yeah. So yes, you can use it on a local platform, but mm-hmm. it will be expensive. Mm-hmm. Yes. Because someone was asking, like they don't understand. When you are paying for product, once calculations are done, the exchange rate is factored in already. Yes, yeah. the exchange rate is factored in, and that three point five percent fee is also factored in. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So if you're told uh, five USD is equal to uh, say eight hundred uh, seven hundred twenty shillings, everything is already factored in. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, uh, as I'm talking this, I'm trying to attempt a payment on a DPO platform. So I want to see how it goes in real time. A local platform? Um, 
DPO handles both local and, and international okay. transactions on behalf of <laughs> so many other vendors whose services we consume. In this case, uh, I'm paying for hosting for the 24-bit domain. Okay. Yeah, and I have encountered DPO when paying a subscription for Nation, Nation Don't Africa. Nation, yeah. So if you are paying digital subscription or for the e-paper, you still encounter you DPO. DPO. Yeah, it's in so many places. Okay, I think. Is DPO on? A movie ticket site in Kenya, I can't remember. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, huh. And Nick, you covered quite a bit of DP on your website, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so this is the kind of things they're onto. So it's, yeah, it's still rotating, whatever, loading. Yeah. <laughs> but one thing I've noticed in this process, which is for me is a pain point, and I wish something can be done, is we all know that lag between initiating a mini app on the Mpesa Super app yes. and it actually loading, loading. and mm. getting you where you want. Um, the global pay option is not a stranger, it's also encountering the same. Mm. And I was here thinking, between the time all of that loads, it's also the same amount of time it will take for me to fish out my wallet from my pocket, yeah, yeah, remove the card <laughs> and see the details. Mm-hmm. And for people who are very good with numbers, you don't even need to check. Mm. Or if you have them captured on your browser. Mm. Yeah, I think that's like for me that's one thing that needs addressing. Yes. Because normally Unona if I have my Visa or MasterCard, mm. my browser already has those details. Yeah. Mm. All I need to do is remember the CVV. Mm. Uh, but some I, I can remember the CVV of my MasterCard or my Visa card. Mm. But with the Pesa, I have to open the app yeah, and indeed. wait for it to load. Mm. Now the problem is if it loads and you expect it to open and then it fails. fails yeah. yeah. And actually, consider actually, you actually need to have data to actually open And you have to have, internet, yeah, you have to have yeah. internet. Yeah. Now, here's the other thing um, about the repeat payments. You actually get to enable it from, from the global app. point. Oh, yeah. yeah. And then, it doesn't matter if you didn't enable before going to subscribe to those services. You enable later, it will just know that next time Netflix comes asking for money, it's supposed to give it's it. It's supposed to work. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. Uh, let me see. Let me see. Any other uh, use cases that you guys have had? I, I, ha- I on my website I pay for certain plugins, and uh-huh. the problem has always been uh, sometimes you have cash on the Mpesa, and yeah, it's so don't. hard to think of. Uh, let me transfer it to the bank, then I can make a payment from the bank <coughs> card. So with uh, this option, I can just pay for plugins directly mm-hmm. uh, using my Mpesa amount. Ah, okay. I really like that. Yeah. And I think I think my my, my domain is about to expire. Um, Dreamhost domain. I should actually use Mpesa you know, direct. Uh, Mpesa direct. Should actually mm-hmm. use it and to actually pay and because it's hosted. It's hosted in the that's, how, that's in, the in the US. US. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, what are your experiences using the cost estimator in the app now? I've used it, and that's what, where I realized the cost estimator is almost giving this. Uh, it's the times I've used the cost estimator before paying, mm-hmm. the exact charge was charged after the transaction. So I think that fee already applies. I don't. Uh, yeah. Yeah, because because you know, I don't know that you're able to tell how much you're gonna spend in in I mean, in, in Kenyan shillings. So. Mm-hmm. Um, if and it already incorporates yes, your fee. Exactly. Uh, Nilikuwa mm-hmm. Gopa will be extra. I know. So, and this this changes depending on the dollar rate, right? My ask is, um, we've talked so much about the dollar, but when you are actually looking at the cost estimator, there's an option to look at, for instance, not just the US dollar. You can check what the uh, Australian, Australian dollar yeah. is doing. Yeah. What uh, the Saudi real is doing? Anyone who's transacted oh. in any other okay. currency that is not the US dollar? I only nope. use the US dollar. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So if you're listening to this and you've actually transacted uh, using, say, the Swiss franc, just do let us know how that experience went. If um, the if you use the cost estimator, if what was estimated there is actually <laughs> what same uh, amount, uh, yeah. the same the uh, foreign exchange rate you got, same amount that was deducted, and all of those things, because we would want to hear your varied experiences. Our own have been uh, limited to the dollar because a lot of the services that we use are either US centered or the dollar is an international uh, f- uh, currency of trade, so a lot of the services will definitely use that. But we were we want to hear what the experiences are with the on sterling with the euro that kind of things now i violated the lag between launching an mpesa mini app like global pay and you actually getting to the app what are some of the other challenges you'd say from your usage of uh, the 
Mpesa Visa Global Card. What are some of the challenges you'd say that need addressing by the Safaricom Visa that you've encountered? And if there are no challenges, say user experiences that could be better. Uh, the main thing is how the mini app fails to open a couple yeah. of times. Yeah. So if the mini app could open every time you need it to open, that would be really good. But then again, uh, the placement of global pay within M-Pesa app. Because you have to go to the growth section if it doesn't appear in the frequently used services. And I am not seeing how I am going to relate uh, a payment procedure with growth. Am I making sense? Mm -hmm. Because on the M-Pesa homepage, there is home, transact, services, and grow. Mm -hmm. So if I hit grow is when I find global pay. Mm -hmm. But I, I'm, not, I'm not finding a way of... Uh, thinking of how global pay is it's for hidden. growth yeah. uh, yeah, it's, it's so hidden i'm sure eh? it's for growth kcb is for growth but global pay is just for payments it's not a savings platform the way i'm sure and kcb and pesa are yeah. so but if they uh, can find a better placement that would be good a better placement for what i didn't for i'm the... saying on the app mm -hmm. To access global oh, pay, you have to oh, go to oh, the yeah, growth yeah, section yeah, yeah. yes but global pay i don't think people will register it as uh as growth in a grow option the way yeah you yeah pairs, yeah, sure yeah, a, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, but like, like for instance when um, i i did get into a number of briefings about this mm -hmm. before launch mm -hmm. so as a result i'll go there specifically because i know to look for it there yeah, uh, but yeah. say assuming mm -hmm. i'm just looking at the mpesa app mm -hmm. it wouldn't hit me that yeah, that's in the growth yes, section yes yeah. mm -hmm. so it needs some demarcation of some sort somewhere and, yes. and considering it's, it's actually a new product because as i said we were in that briefing Maybe put it, you know where we have the send request pay, you wake up or you know where? Yeah, find maybe, a better yeah, placement. Like mm. Immediately open the M-Pesa app, mm. I should be able to actually see the global pay option for me to actually access and just you pay for whatever service I want to pay for. Another thing for me is, I have made a TikTok of, of uh, global pay. Mm. Uh, see, it's the M-Pesa Visa card. Yeah. And that's the main story uh, in, the, in the video. Mm. And... It, it has received a lot of traction and a lot of questions. Mm -hmm. But for very many people who've tried it out after watching that, mm -hmm. uh, the feedback is, uh, why is it called Global Pay global. within the app? Mm -hmm. uh, they expect to come to the Nini and save and see Empresa Visa card. So it doesn't it's register like, uh, to uh, people uh, that the Empresa Visa card is under Global Pay. I, I, I actually get them. Mm -hmm. And you see, <clears throat> uh, Safaricom did launch Empresa Global a while back long before they span off M-Pesa and we got M-Pesa Africa yeah, and yeah. like mm -hmm. um, while it would make sense for the folks at M-Pesa and Safaricom to have it called Global Pay and the folks at Visa would want that and have its own branding mm -hmm. it's actually quite confusing for people who are not me and you who consume these kinds of services on a daily <laughs> um, what is Global Pay? Like, uh, for, for instance for me it will either M-Pesa Visa card or M-Pesa card because basically it's a card, it's virtual and all those are yeah. details. Mm. People should just be able to know there's a card uh, they can use it and basically that's for the people who are doing uh, kind of like the branding and the rest because mm. the technical bit did do their part. We have a card that at least from a literal experience it does work. Mm. Now it's a matter of fact is uh, placing it correctly so that Kenyans can actually know it exists and one of the biggest it. marketing places is within the app mm -hmm. like that's a nice nice place within the app to place it there everyone can get to access it to experience it those kinds of things another thing that i noticed is on the mpesa app there is a section called transact Cindy, mm -hmm. you go to transact you find financial services wallets a send and request pay and all that under send and request there is global <laughs> so if you hit global you find send to mobile send to bank send oh, yeah. to and now that's the old m yeah, that's, global yeah, oh, yeah, that's, that's the not a card yes yeah, yeah that can be confusing roaming and all that oh yeah but you don't get to see m global in that section it even has a cost estimator you, uh, you don't get to see global pay in that section oh yeah i think uh, it should fall under that right, right? yeah so that's feedback I've received. People are asking, I will say my global, Miss Yoniko Global. Mm. Yeah, Donna, eh. yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. that's the global that has been around for what, yeah, two, while, three eh, years eh. now, and it's the one place that people will go to directly. Mm, mm. Makes sense. Now, an update. The transaction I initiated when we were in the middle of this podcast, mm -hmm. 
um, is now refreshing but appears to have largely failed oh. which is an expected outcome because it's a local site we are using oh, using you the, the DPO, using uh, oh, yeah. the dpo yeah plus the, yes. the of, is a local fintech so yeah. <laughs> <I'll understand. laughs> no, no 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 it's a local fintech but it could be enabling yeah. uh, international um, payments uh, international transaction. for instance if you go to an angolan website and you find dpo uh, deployed their systems there it should work yeah mm. yeah you remember they said uh, local transactions should not work mm. yeah so I, I'm guessing be, they, yeah uh, because in this case i was just trying like to see what fail-safe mechanisms are there. Mm-hmm. In, in, in this particular portal, I'm paying for hosting mm-hmm. with a, for a podcast, and it's a local hosting provider who also offers Lipan Empress. Lipa yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, obviously, this should be the outcome for pretty much Most, everyone. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Who, say you go on Jumia, you see something you like, you key in the card details that are from the Empress virtual card, this is what should happen. Mm-hmm. But um, you hop on to an international a platform say you go to walmart and you're buying a rice cooker over there it should work yeah yeah um, another question i saw someone ask me am i able to see um you know statements from my mpesa visa yes uh, after every pay. transaction yes. uh opportunity you should be able to see the statement uh of what you did and the cost and the time i believe i hope my gl- uh, it has launched today yeah so you, you uh, the same way uh, Pesa app uh, on on the Pesa transactions you see them Apochini you should be able to see that here. Yeah. Also something I came to learn I which I had mentioned the other time uh, you can set card limits you remember the oh, ba- yes, monthly yes, budget yes yes yes, yeah. yes yes so it's not per se card limit it's only a monthly budget monthly budget yeah, yeah I was explained to you that even if you set uh, five thousand as your monthly spend limit if you make a transaction past that limit yeah, it, it, will still, it, yeah. it will fail um, no it, it will f- still it work. work yeah because it's only a suggested monthly budget it doesn't limit your card access oh yeah, yeah, yeah. ah so oh, it, okay. it will stay all the way till you hit them pesa hard limits right yes. yeah so that's uh, that's a one so even if three, your limit is 5k uh, we may set up a monthly budget if you make a transaction past 5k still will <laughs> register okay now i have a question for all of you you've uh, shared with us your use cases the challenges where, where you think it will be better from a user experience from a branding standpoint and all of those where do you see is um the mpesa virtual card where, where do you see growth points like what are some of the things we expect to use it for in the future you personally or what and what do you envision say people who read techish to use it for okay we have very many services that are offered on, on the internet uh that are not local services mm-hmm. and it's not just shopping uh kuna devs kuna yeah. nini, there, there's other services that you may require on the internet and kenyans mostly do not have bank accounts ama those who have bank accounts don't bother to use their cards ama put cash there mm-hmm. so, mm-hmm. so i feel mpesa has an, has found a it's a it's a growing niche market that uh, is set to really work for them because in future with more people just registering mpesa as the default payment yeah. uh, means mm-hmm. they will also think of paying globally with mpesa mm-hmm. so this is what works right now and i think there could be better ways of improving it in future such that in a work even better yeah so personally for me i'll continue using it for platforms that i always paid with my loop card or my other cards as long as i feel it's better if i find loop to be cheaper for a transaction i will stick there because that has already always worked yeah and if i find that i always have to feel uh, uncomfortable mm-hmm. opening an app looking for the cvv mm-hmm. i'll stick with what works mm-hmm. but for very many people who don't have access to such uh, nini mm-hmm. they will continue using um, and they will try and continue using mpesa yeah mm-hmm. and I, th- i think just as this one said you know for you know for a long time now we've been talking about how we want most of these platforms <laughs> even local person to have mpesa as a payment option right because how many people do you know that actually prefer using cards am I? you see for the mpesa as long as i should put in mind the number of uh, customers the mpesa have mm-hmm. all these so if you're able to me what i'm mentioning is mpesa you know as they said during the launch of course they plan to roll this you know a product across other markets yeah and now if all this uh even uh but i want to make i want them to actually even make it local for local purchases yeah so that it's easier for me i know if i have from 200 in my in my mpesa i can actually do a local payment 
we're not having to worry about carrying cash mm. yeah, or even a local payment uh, i would think the best option for safaricom would to be so just the normal payment uh what was done earlier on mpesa ta- card ta- one tap on, on and all that because most phones now nowadays have nfc and all that so i think that would be the better option have a way of enabling that or directly from the phone mm-hmm. so that i can tap and go no. yeah because you, you remember actually when when, uh, when the invite was sent uh to me for the for the launch of this product mm. remember they brought a card with the visa and mpesa branding mm. and when i shared that phone on my twitter page mm. people actually thought it's a physical that's what card. Is launching, yes. a physical uh. mpesa visa card okay that would be pretty interesting mm. but yeah mm. We are past the sell-by date of physical cards, and uh, while everyone else will run to have a physical card and probably offer a virtual card as an option, for Safaricom, really, they already have their own physical card. It's called M-Pesa, Lipa, PayBill, oh, yeah. Till, all those implementation of uh, implementations of M-Pesa that existed before the launch of uh, Global Pay a few days earlier. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There was something I wanted to raise that I noticed, but acha itakuja kwa kile kidogo. Uh imepotea it was something to do with Mpesa uh, with a global pay app but uh. Uh, what are the odds will it make sense for you if it was span of as its own app? Exactly uh, the question I wanted to actually uh, bring up. I don't, I don't think, think it will be necessary uh, because we already have so many Mpesa apps. I mean Safaricom apps. Mm-hmm. We have the My Safaricom app. They reduced uh, all of them. Yeah, we have My Safaricom and Mpesa. Them, now the Mpesa app. Then why do we need an extra app for Mpesa? Those are too many just for apps. global pay. Yeah, and yeah. remember the Mpesa app is super app. So yes, it's a super app. So yeah. many things and it's annoying for me to find Madaraka Express health I know. Nini, pushed on my face and also they're even going a further uh, not higher to send Mpesa messages. Mm-hmm. Oh, Mtiba Oh, Nini is free. This buy oh, Nini buy. Yeah, it's annoying. How do you see them pushing uh, this product to us now that the novelty of the launch has worn off and we are getting down to that uh, slow period where we are using it? We no longer talk about it. Right, yeah. uh, what will now make? Now you are already an Mpesa Visa Global Card uh, user, user, virtual user. card user. Yeah. What will make you excited all over again? What one thing can they add in there? Like. Other than because we're all going to slump into the routine of using it. Your Netflix is up, your Mpesa has Kakidogo cash, it will be deducted. Spotify, on to the next one. If we realize a whole year has gone by. Uh, so for, at least for other people, there's almost no incentive to keep going back yeah. to the global play mini app. Once you've set up and recurring payments are on and you're still within the three-year limit where the card is valid. Yeah, so what will make you all excited all over again? I think it's uh, uh, it's pretty much an easy market for Safaricom mm-hmm. for everyone who's who'll set up global pay and set <laughs> recurring payments. Yeah. yeah, so in that regard, our work was safe in terms of business but i think with platforms coming up uh safaricom will have to find a way of uh, i don't know how to put this but it, it also slumps their growth in some way for yeah. example if disney plus is to come to kenya mm-hmm. what what incentivizes them a uh, chance to have a an mpesa payment means the way spotify has mm-hmm. no no mpesa uh, spotify already has a way of paying for uh, using yeah, mpesa yeah. indio uh i can already pay for uh on on place so i can already pay for apps using mpesa express no, no these are solutions that were built particularly to enable mpesa payments mm-hmm. there so in some way it also slows down their growth. i i can't find a way of make, uh thinking of for example what what i was saying if disney is coming into kenya mm-hmm. they they already have a payments means india you can pay with your cards but if you come to kenya the idea will be you work with safaricom to uh, ensure a checkout system that accepts mpesa mm-hmm. that's all gone because they can accept via the mpesa visa card so i don't know what comes next but i feel like it will slow down their growth in that regard um i think for me will be i'm not a big fan of Fuliza, to be honest but, but you want to see no, Fuliza? yeah <laughs> because you know look at the, uh, the numbers safaricom yes. is pulling with Fuliza. <laughs> hmm? Good point, uh, and because that will make yes. uh, the M-Pesa virtual card act like some sort of credit card. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So if I'm renewing my domain, for example, or paying for my Netflix, mm-hmm. and I don't have enough money in my M-Pesa, 
Mm-hmm. You can just fully yes, yeah. I can just fully yeah. the, 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 yeah. the repeat payment comes through. Yeah. Mine just prompt I know my pin and you know the, the transaction goes through. I mean that, I think yeah. that will not <laughs> work. Mm-hmm. Because right now you can't do that. You can't do that with it. Mm-hmm. And I don't know why while you are more evil. maybe it's because that cash needs to check. I don't know. Any mm-hmm. Okay, that's brilliant and it's also a good point to end this interaction oh b- before before we end uh you remember last time chance raised the issue of why is there an expiry nini, nini, mm-hmm. if it's a virtual card mm-hmm. uh, the most uh easiest answer to give is when you're checking out you need a date yeah the card needs a number and the date, yeah, and the date uh, yeah. because the platform is set up that way so that's why there's an expiry date okay Uh, and the timeline for this podcast has expired so it's time to wrap up uh, thank you for listening in we'd like we've shared so many thoughts uh, they are scattered all over the place uh, we don't to know what your thoughts are do you think like you don't choose the the empesa uh, virtual card whether you have money or not so full is a style so because right now what it does is it fetches money that's already in your empesa account and gets to use it for for payments whatever subscriptions you're on anything you need it at so long as it's an international platform and those kinds of things but what if your netflix is due yeah how na pesa pale pesa you you do want to fully the netflix eh kitu kayo to if a new provider uh, is coming to kenya uh, previously we'd and uh, like spotify did recently we'd expect them uh, to set up pesa payment option blah blah those kinds of things right now and maybe we can get a response from those in the know or even safaricom right now if someone new is coming since we have this virtual card uh, thing going on what's the incentive to do that i know uh, the focus for this card as far as safaricom goes is for international payments so anyone playing local would still want to integrate all the mpesa things so that we pay via the usual means but what if just what if everyone just decides well there are cards there uh, everyone can access the service from where we are because think about it previously other than uh, copyright restrictions we'd have continued using spotify as long as we had an easy way of paying for it from wherever it was that works and three we want to hear from you what your experiences are with the other foreign currencies that the card uh, allows you to because pretty much you can transact pretty much everywhere Yeah beyond that I think, I, think, I, think, I think the police will just be so it's a bit a big deal actually for most people because mm-hmm. not be a big deal but not, the, not all the, the time tunakonga na pesa kwa mpesa you see baby yeah alafu unajua it's an automated payment yes. so maybe you forgot about everything alafu ndio your netflix charge lipo kwa police balance ya 8 so ama 12 or 1450 yeah maybe you police are gains interest every day so for me i don't know but anyway it's a good point to end that yes all right uh thank you for listening in as usual share all your feedback from whichever platform you are listening uh, to this and back to my initial call if you want to sponsor this podcast do reach out to any of us and we'll be happy to take you on board and so that we can shoot our podcast from nice nice locations around the country i've been Emmanuel Chianze Dixon Chieno and I'm Nick Anali from Turkey and remember actually if you have any question you want to ask us uh, that you want to post there you know good friends safari come just shoot us a dm or just uh, drop us an email anywhere just reach out to us and actually we will be able to answer any questions that we have around this particular product Very cool. Bye and see you in the next episode. See ya.